in Galatians chapter 6, St. John chapter 4, and Galatians chapter 6. St. John chapter 4, and Galatians chapter 6. I brought, I brought everybody something today, and I got it in this black bag. Everybody want to know what's in the bag. You know, it's a wonderful thing to have our friends and our visitors here this morning. And they've already made themselves known. And my sister Doris, she's come back for more. Well, our sister Miller, we thank God for all our family. And dear thanks and appreciation of Mother Green. Just a matter of time for Evangelist Green to kind of ease in. Amen. But you know, we just trust in the Lord one day at a time. Amen? Amen? So I ask that you pray much for our members who are going through in their bodies. Uh, you, 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 you have to go through something in order to understand. Amen? Amen? But I thank God for all of them and our visitors and our friends that are here this morning. Amen? Amen. And I know that we are all uh, up against something these days. And, uh, but we're going to claim the victory anyhow. Amen. If I were to put a title on today's message, I would say, in order for you to reap, you have to sow. Amen. Look at somebody and say, in order for you to reap, you have to sow. Look to somebody and say, it's your season. To be, to be blessed. So don't give up. So don't give up. Look at somebody else and say, it's your season, it's your season. To, be to be blessed. So don't give up. Don't give up. You see, that? you know, we will, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to reap what you sow. But you got to sow something in order to read. Amen. Well, come on, somebody. Amen. Uh, we're living in uh, these last days, and we have to be sowing in the kingdom. Yes. You don't know how God going to do and what he's going to do. Amen. Well, come on, somebody. Amen. So I'm grateful today to know that this is my season to be blessed. Amen. I ain't just talking about... I'm not just talking about uh, it's October and, 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 and it's getting towards the end of the year. I'm talking about I believe that God right now yes. is getting ready to shout out blessings. Yes. For all those that have been faithful and sowing, God said, now it's your time to reap. Yes. I got proof now that God wants you to reap. Amen. Yes. Somebody said, what you got in the bag, Pastor? What you got in the bag, Pastor? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> uh, it, it, ain't, it ain't ticking, so you ain't got to worry about anything. Going. I might go off in here myself, but what is in this bag ain't going to go off. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and my wife didn't know, but I bought a few things from her uh, a special, special, uh, you know, stock. <laughs> and, and so I, I just wanted to bring out one thing first. You know, in order for a man to sow, uh, reap, he has to sow. Ain't that right? Amen. And so I, I was nice enough to bring out uh, one of her wheat things. Oh, come on, somebody. Well, some of y'all ain't seen real wheat. This is wheat. You know, I'm, I'm going to let the reality set in because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this around so you can look at it. And touch it because this this is how it begins. Come on, somebody, wheat and how it looks. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the wheat and the tear this morning. And tear is just weed that look just like wheat, but it's smaller and it's lighter. So when the when the wonain, what they call wonowing, throw it up, the wind got a way of blowing the wheat and the shaft away, but the wheat always remains. Are y'all with me on this? 
So now, I, I got wheat, but you know, long before Junior, we just can't eat this like this. Oh, come on, somebody. We just, we just can't go and start out in the wheat field and start eating, but sometime between that wheat and uh, wheat bread, this, this is the beginning product, and this is the finished product. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, it, it says all natural, rustic blend wheat, dusted in cornmeal, good old-fashioned artistic bee bread wheat. Oh, y'all with me on this? On one hand, you got the wheat that came out of the field. On the other hand, you got a finished product. Uh, Sometimes God got us sitting out for a while. But when he finishes, we're going to be bread meant for the master. Are right, y'all with me on this? Oh, I, I'm going to pass them around so you can get the feel for it. Amen? Amen? When you get through looking at it, by the time everybody looking at it, don't nobody be taking none of my bread now. Amen. You can lead, look at the wheat. Amen. Come on. Amen. You can pass, when you finish looking at that, pass it around to make sure the children, everybody, get a look at this because I want to make sure you understand where I'm coming from in this. This is a deep message this morning, a message in which I want you to understand how God will operate. Amen? Amen. Everybody got Galatians chapter 6, starting at verse 1. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6, starting at verses 1. Amen? Amen. If you got to say amen. Amen. Look to somebody and say, in order for you to reap, you must sow. You ain't no use to trying to reap something if you ain't sold nothing. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. If you want something, you got to sow. Amen? Amen. And, and, and the Bible is full of passages of scriptures that teaches us various lessons about sowing and reaping. And, it, and you know, in order for you to get healed, you got to be able to sow seeds of healing. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. In order for you to get delivered, you have to sow seeds of deliverance. In order for you to get anything from God, you got to sow in order for you to reap. But this is your season for reaping. This is your season to get blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. Oh, my Lord. Galatians chapter 6, he, he starts off by saying, Take your time and look at it. You can feel it and touch it. It ain't going to bite you. It's, 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 it's wheat that will oftentimes be described. Uh, and you need to understand something about wheat and tear before I get started. Uh, uh, wheat and tear, well, tear is, is, is a weed that grows among the wheat. And if you eat tear, it's poisonous. And, and you need to understand that that, that when you eat a, 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 a seed of tear, it will produce dizziness and sometimes even death. If you swallow it, tears are, are, are similar, but they're smaller and they're lighter. And tear, when they are thrust in the air by the what they call winnowing, that is the man or the woman that throws the wheat up to separate the, uh, the wheat uh, from the shaft. If the tear is with it, it also blows away. And at that point, uh, uh, it's gathered together and is put in a special vac where there is crushing of the wheat seed and finally ground into powder that can make anything from cornmeal to flour. Yeah. Well, come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And in one hand, you're looking at wheat that looked like in the field. In the other hand, you're looking at wheat that's been, been through the process. <laughs> and the finished result is something that you sit on your table. Amen. I'm here to tell you, God knows that you're going to go through the process Amen. of living here on earth. But when it's all said and done, I want you to know you're going to sit at God's table. Amen. My, my, my. You see, there were, there were men and women that when they would that take the, 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 the task, when it, would, when, when it wouldn't blow away, but it cleaved tight to the wheat, there were, there were men and women that would sift the wheat. And that, the tear was smaller than the, the wheat seed. It would fall through the sifter. 
And then it was separated and taken back to the wheel to be ground all over again. Amen. It's amazing that long before man knew about penicillin, there was bread that was sitting around molding that gave man the wisdom to find out what is mold all about. Amen. And all mold is in a peel fashion is nothing but penicillin. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. And even if you keep bread after a period of time and you don't eat it, what happens to it begins to roll. Amen. Am I talking right? Yes. We're still talking about uh, uh, the reaper before in order for you to reap, you must sow. But you have to sow that which God has put in your heart. Here in Galatians, we, we see, and I'm going to go back and forth here, but we see in chapter 6, verses 1, he said, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness. But while you're restoring somebody back to their rightful place, always consider yourself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to bear your burden. Bear your burden. In, prayer. in prayer. And you're going to bear my burden. Yeah. In prayer. Yeah. Verse 2 says, Bear ye one another's burden so ye fulfill the law of Christ. Uh -huh. He has a law in that we help one another. Amen. For if a man think himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceived himself. You see, people are so seeds of deception. And they deceive themselves. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate Unto him that teaches in all good things. I'll take that, brother. Did everybody get a chance to feel it and look at it? All right. We'll be walking around with some bread and wheat today, huh? For he says in, 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 uh, in verse 6, 7, I'm sorry, 8. I'm sorry, verse uh, 7. He said, be not deceived. Be not deceived. Look at somebody and say, be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not marked. E.D. E past tense. God is not marked. Amen. For whatsoever a man or woman soweth, Amen. that shall he or he or she also reap. Amen. You can't reap it unless you sow it. You can't sow good seeds, come on somebody, and reap bad things. Amen. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Amen. Oh, come on somebody. Amen. Whether you're on the mountain or in the valley below, yeah. whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Amen. For he says, for whatsoever man soweth, that which shall he reap. Verse 8 says, for he that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption. But he that sold to the Spirit yes. shall the Spirit read life everlasting. Everybody say, I want everlasting life. I want everlasting life. But in order for you to have it, you got to sow into the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Are y'all with me on this? Amen. Uh, a man may plant a seed to get some wheat in the field. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But in order for him to eat this wheat that he's planted, there is this whole process of getting rid of the shaft. Yeah. Oh, my God. In order for you to be what God wants you to do and be what God called you to do, you've got to be able to sow the thing that God put in your heart to sow. Amen. Stay with me now. He says in verse 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing. Oh, Sometimes we get to sowing. We get to sowing, and we sow a little more. But every now and then, we get weary in our sowing. But he said, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season. 
Oh, come on, somebody. In due season, we shall reap if we faint not. In order for you to get what God got for you, you got to be able to sow. And then you can reap. Whatever God got is in his will. But you got to do your part. I think Paul said uh, one man plant and another man water. Apollos may plant, I may water. But in the final analysis, God is going to give the increase. Look at somebody and say, I'm looking for my increase right here and right now. Oh my God, I don't think y'all getting it yet. You didn't already felt the wheat in one state and felt the wheat in another. This is wheat and so is this. But it's a process of how we got there. You and I are going through a process. Your body might be going through something, but in a final analysis, you're going to reap eternal life. You're going to have eternal life. But you can't give up. You can't give in. You can't get tired. And you can't get weary. Just keep on holding on. And your change is about to happen. My, my. I think John was on the island of Patmos. And John said, I looked over and I saw one that looked like the Son of Man. And there that stood by him was the 144,000. And there he was standing there. And I heard the hops hopping. I heard the voices singing. And the 144,000 sung a song that no other man could sing except him who were called by God. They were all virgins, and they were blessed of God. And John said, I looked, and there was one that sit upon a white cloud, and in his hand there was a sickle. Oh, come on, somebody. And the angel said to the one that on the white cloud that came from the temple of God, thrust in thy sickle. The harvest is ready. The harvest is ready. It's ready to be collected. There came one out of the midst of the altar that said to one that sit upon the throne, the earth is ready. It's prepared to be cultivated. It's prepared to be picked up. You don't understand what I'm saying today. The same Jesus that went up into the cloud. And like many, he's coming back. He's got an anointing on everybody that's called by my name. He's got a seal in their forehead. You have a security in your life. A security to have eternal life in the name of Jesus. You might be just weed in the field. Come on, somebody. But when God gets through thrashing up, the shaft and the tail away from you, you're going to be pretty weak. That would be nothing of the master's use. Look at somebody and say, you're meant for the master's use. My, my, my. You see, this angel was trying to convince Christ, thrusting thy sickle. Now is the time. And then another angel came out from the temple. There was about three or four angels, and several of them had sickles. And then one of them said, now the women that remain that will not accept God. They all gather together at the wine vats, thrusting thy sickle, hallelujah, to gather those that are not called by his name to be cast out. My, 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 look at somebody that says, I want to be ready when the Lord began to reap what he sowed. You see, God sowed eternal life in your life, and he's coming back for you and me. You believe that today? Uh, just as sure as you're looking at this week in one fashion and seeing it finish in another fashion, in between the product that he's prepared, he's coming back. You're going to be called out one day to meet him in the air. Uh, you know, Peter oftentimes got in trouble. And Jesus said, I know you're quick to say something, you're quick to do something, but... I pray for you. 
Jesus said to Peter, I prayed for you, and the reason I prayed for you is because the devil want to shift you. Yes. He want to sift you yes. like we. Amen. Don't you realize that God has got a calling on your life? And this calling is assured by his power. Amen. And you need to understand that even though the world might not understand what you're going through, God do. Amen. My, my, my. Amen. Turn your Bibles just for a moment to St. John chapter 4. I might not be able to read all this because of the time. But what I do want you to understand is here in this particular chapter, there was this woman that was at the well. And it's interesting that she was at the well about noontime. Uh, she was nothing but weep in the field. Are y'all with me on this? And while she was there, she probably went in the middle of the day when it was hot. Because normally women will go to the well early in the morning and gather all things together for the day's chores. Yes. But this woman probably didn't want to go and probably didn't want to have nothing to say to nobody. Wanted to mind her own business. But I want you to understand that in her heart, yes. there was a desire to want to do right. Yes. Oh, you have to read the whole story. Yes. And her desire was to just go to the well and, and get some water and come on back home. But while she was at the well, yes. are y'all with me on this? Yes. While she was down with her water pot, getting ready to get some water, there she met a man by the name of Jesus. Yes. And, 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 and when she met this man, uh, they had this conversation about if you knew who I was, you would ask, what of me? But she said, we being uh, uh, Samaritans don't have no dealing with the Jews. And Jesus went on with the conversation about if you knew who I am. Come on, somebody. I'm the one that would, come on, somebody, take my sickle in the wheat and gather them into bundles. Oh, my God. And the woman began to have this conversation with Christ. But I want to pick up in verse 28 where it says that this woman, when she finished this conversation with Christ, she recognized who he was. And she just couldn't keep it to herself. The Bible said in verse 28, the woman then left, she got so excited about knowing who Christ was, she left her water pot. Oh, come on, somebody. And she went away into the city and said to the men, come see a man. Oh, come on, somebody. I want you to meet somebody that told me everything about my life. Oh, come on, somebody. One that know how to stick his sickle in and gather it. You see, in order for you to get wheat, you got to learn how to use a sickle. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. Maybe, they, maybe I went too deep, too fast. In order for this to be cut just right, it takes a special sickle to cut it, to gather it all together, and to chop it off evenly. And they ain't interested in the stalk. They're only interested in the wheat. Are y'all with me on this? And, 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 and Jesus knew that if I could just stick my sickle in this woman's life and begin to shake her to the core, she'll be a good witness and what started out as really the field is now bread on the table. Are y'all with me on this? Uh, this woman left her water pot and ran into the city, and everybody she ran into said, come and see a man. How many of y'all got excited about Jesus that I want you to meet this man? He's a holy man. He's a righteous man. A man that died for my sin, that I can have eternal life. I reap into his life, and now I can sow. I can't only uh, reap, but I can sow what he gave me. But when she told all these men in the city, the scripture said all the town came out. Who is this man? And it goes on to say in verse 30, they went out of the city and came under him. And the meanwhile, 
Meanwhile, while his disciples was praying him, saying, Master, come on and eat. And he said, I have meat that you know not of. Amen, amen. Therefore said the disciples to him, have any man brought him out something to eat? No, because he was trying to get some wheat together. Amen. His meat and his bread was reaching souls. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me Amen. and to finish his work. Yes. Say not ye, there are yet four months and then come the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Ain't that what he said? Stay with me for a moment. Now, I want you to get the, the whole picture here. Jesus is standing there talking to a woman and a disciple, and all of a sudden, all the town came out. All Roxbury showed up to hear what Jesus had to say. And then he said, Behold, I come. Lift up your eyes and look for the fields. They are white already to harvest. And he that reap receiveth wages and gather fruit unto life eternal. Amen. He that reapeth receiveth wages and gather fruit unto life eternal. Amen. One more time. He that reapeth receiveth wages and gather fruit unto life eternal. Amen. That both he that sowed and he that reapeth may get happy together. Amen. Are y'all with me on this? It don't matter who witnessed to that person last week. It don't matter who watered last week. I want you to stay in the final analysis that we have had the soul both is going to rejoice together. It don't matter, man. Somebody said, that don't look like weak to me, but you said we ain't finished yet. Oh, come on, somebody. It might not look like the finished product because God is still working on you. God is still blowing away things in your life that need to be blown away. God is still taking away things in your life that need to be taken away so that you will be a finished product meant for the master's use. I don't think y'all getting this. If I, I say, come and eat some of this, y'all say, oh, I ain't eating that. But if I say, come and get some of this with some olive oil, oh, there you go, <laughs> licking your lips now already. You following me? Come on, somebody. It's important. Just a few more verses. He says in verse 37, and herein is that saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. Ain't that right? You can't, you can't reap nothing if you don't sow nothing. Look at somebody and say, ain't no use to you trying to reap something. If you ain't sold nothing. Sold. Come on, somebody. <laughs> ain't no use to you trying to get what God got for you if you ain't did nothing what God wants you to do. <laughs> I send you to reap that what whereon you bestow no labor. Come on, somebody. Other men labor. <laughs> And ye are into, into their labor. Just be one person. <laughs> Some of y'all getting blessed because of your grandmother and your grandfather. Some of y'all getting blessed because of what your mother sold and your daddy sold. Some of y'all getting blessed because of what your mama sold and your daddy sold. Oh, y'all ain't with me. Some of y'all getting blessed because of what your children sold and they return back to you. Are y'all with me on this? It might not look like you're going to get anything, but God got a way of giving it back. Because he said everything that the caterpillar, everything that the locust, everything that the enemy took away, God said, I'm going to give it back. Ain't no way you're going to sow and the enemy going to hold on to it and God don't give it back to you. In fact, I, the way I look at it, anytime the enemy got something that belonged to me, God got a way of taking it out of his hand, giving me a bumper crop, and what I was supposed to get, they done doubled it. Don't tell me what God can't do now. Look at somebody and say, don't tell me what God can't do. 
Now this is what I like about verse 39. There are always people, when you do something, one thing I love about the Lord, you don't have to be around for others to see you get the credit. Are y'all with me on this? You, you ain't got to be around when God said, I'm going to save you and your household. <laughs> you might be long gone and, and moved on and made a slip down life's back door and God will say, I'm still going to bless him. I'm still going to bless her. Why? Because she labored in love. He labored in love. And many people will labor and you have come into their labor and appreciate what they've done. Amen. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. Yes. And then he says, labor, that ye enter into that labor. Yes. And verse 39 says, many of the Samaritans yes. of the city believed, believed on him for the saying of a woman which testified. Yes. If you testify, you're going to reap the blessings. Yes. If you tell what God does, you're going to get what God got. Amen. She testified, he told me all that ever I did. Amen. And even though the women and the men and the people in the city didn't want to go out because she told them, come and see a man. They went out anyhow, and Christ gave her the credit because he knew when he stuck his stickle in to reap her life, that she will go and tell others about what he told her. He went to tell her about eternal life and that he was the son of the living God. And then he came and died that they might have eternal life. Amen. 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 Oh, my, my. I, 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 let, me, let me just put this bread down for a minute. My, my, my. You know... There are many people that are working in the vineyard. Uh -huh. And some started early in the morning. On, Jesus had to go back at 9, and then he went back at 11. Uh -huh. He went back at 3, and then he got, got me, so he got so much labor and work in the vineyard, he saw men that were standing in the marketplace all day long. And he agreed with all those men that worked in the labor in the vineyard, I'll give you a penny, I'll give you a penny for working all day. And they don't sound like much money today, but in those days, there was some money. And they went into the field and they labored all day. And even in the 11th hour, yes. when men and women that were standing around in the marketplace, he went in to draw these men, come and work for one hour, and I'll agree with you. Now that sounds pretty good if you got a job and you can work one hour and get paid a full eight hours, don't you? Amen. Amen. Well, come on, somebody. Amen. But let's flip the coin a minute and look at it. They have been hanging in the marketplace all day, waiting to get some work. And you have to understand they have families to feed. Yes. This man that owned the vineyard recognized that the, that the harvest is ready, but the labors are few. Amen. We got to go out and we got to look at the wheat that's right already. There's a lot of people today that are in need of Jesus, and we got to get the message out. Amen. They're on your job. They're in your community. They're in your neighborhood. They're around about you. Amen. And all you got to do is show them. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. A little love. Yes, that's right. And when he went out the other hour, the Bible said there he was. Hallelujah. Amen. And they came to get their pay, and man, they had worked all day. He got one penny. The man that came at the 11th hour, he got one penny. But the man that worked all day and toiled in the heat and the sun, he caught an attitude. Oh, y'all ain't with me now. If you use an attitude and you sow an attitude, guess what you're going to get back? Now you're thinking. If you sow hate, guess what you're going to get back? If you sow love, guess what you're going to get back? If you sow kindness, guess what you're going to get back? If you sow meanness, guess what you're going to get? If you sow backbiting, whatever man or woman sow, that shall they reap. It doesn't matter what you sow, it's coming back. I don't care how holy he is. 
I don't care how righteous you is. Come on, somebody. I don't care how well you can preach or teach. Whatever you put out there, there's got a way of working its way back to you. Now, I know some people, they ain't going to want to hear it. Come on, somebody. Some people ain't going to want to hear it. Amen? Amen. But I'm going to tell that to you anyhow. If you sow bad things, bad things ain't going to happen. Amen. You can't sow good fruit trees and evil fruit grow on the tree. Come on, somebody. You can't sow all kinds of bad things and expect good things to happen to you. Amen. Time is running out, saints. We need to sow good things. The man that caught the attitude because he'd been there all day. And it sounded like he was right. But they forgot the man who owned the field. He said, if it's wrong for me to do whatever I want with my money in my field, it's amazing how people get all up in your business. Amen. They sow all kind of stuff. Come on, somebody. Oh, 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 I'm meddling now. I'm meddling now. Let me go back to the weed here. For they meddling now. They don't see themselves out in the field in the toil of the hot sun. They're all up in your business, but when you ask them about that, come on, somebody. Amen. You tell somebody to shut up before the day is out and we get out, somebody's going to tell you to shut up. Amen. You ain't somebody else in the guess what? Somebody's going to be in your face. You got to understand God is not marked. God is not deceived. Whatever a man saw, that's what he's going to reap. You put it out there, you know what expect is going to come to you. Y'all don't like that kind of preacher. Come on, somebody. You break bad with somebody? Guess what? Somebody gonna break bad with you. You kill somebody? Guess what? Somebody gonna kill you. You cuss somebody out because nobody in here cuss. Well, they call cussing saints. But you see, there's still wheat in the field. They ain't a finished product yet. God is still working on them. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my sister. Amen? I might need two of these. Amen? <laughs> Am I one of you? Come on, somebody. Thank you, my brother, for keeping an eye on me. We thank the Lord for all things, but this man got an attitude. And this owner of the field wanted him to know what belonged to the Lord is the Lord's. And whatever God going to bless you with, come on somebody, whether you've been saved a long time or just got saved today, God is going to still bless you and reward you accordingly. You don't have to worry about somebody getting more than what you got. All you got to do is hold on and don't be weary in well doing. You might not be a finished product, kid. You might be still out on the field. Come on, somebody. It's amazing how God people. Come on, somebody. Got everything this world has to offer. They got bread on the one arm and wheat on the other. And while the meat is trapped between their teeth, they still complaining. Oh, come on, somebody. You don't think this won't make no meal? Get you some olive oil? That's what Batucci do. They bring out some oil. They warm it up. Come on, somebody. Put a little seasoning in it. Come on, somebody. Give me a piece of bread. You think I'm making that go with all of God? Huh? I'm going to have to preach a sermon on olive oil because I don't think y'all understand. It was a way of life. We was a way of life. We built a foundation. We kept a nation. If you don't believe me, ask Joseph when he was down in Egypt. And he was able to use wheat for seven long years to bother with all the nations around the world. And brought his mom and daddy down to their knees, begging for wheat down in Egypt. One and who? His brother sold him into slavery. Now, what I like about that story, and I'm going to be all over the place so you can get this message. What I like about the story is Jacob was a deceiver. Oh, come on, somebody. And he deceived his brother Esau along with his mother. Now, let me tell you some interesting facts. It's amazing. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rachel, I'm saying Rebecca and Rachel, 
amazing that each one of their wives was barren until God said, I'm going to bless you with a seed. Amen. Are y'all with me on this? Amen. And when Jacob tricked his brother Esau and deceived his brother out of his inheritance and fled to his uncle Levin, he got deceived not only by his uncle Levin, but his own son deceived him when they killed a goat. The same kind of goat he put on the back of his neck and his arm to fool his daddy. His, his son put blood of goats on the coat of many colors. And said, look what a wild beast did you to your son. Yeah. Are y'all with me on this? Some of us are still out in the field. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, you still out in the field? Yeah. Can you imagine one week talking to another week and say, you still out here? Say, yeah, my mama went to the table. <laughs> Left me out here for somebody to read me. Now you're getting the picture. You need to understand these things. These are deep thoughts of God that he taught in parable so you and I can understand the power of God and the mystery of God. This man got mad and upset with the owner of the field, but this owner said, this is my field. God said, you are my soul. You are my life. And I bought you with a price. Well, come on, somebody. And the price was paid in full. And all you have to do in order to have eternal life is to claim Jesus as your personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you might go through something while you're in the field. Come on, y'all want to feel this again? Y'all want to test it? It's making sense now, ain't it? Man, you can see the people on TV and say, what in the world? That man got a big old wheat. <laughs> and he is showing people bread. He's making them hungry. <laughs> There's a message. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And this man finally realized that whoever is first shall be last. Many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Why is that so important? Because some people are so busy thinking they can buy their way out of heaven. Uh -huh. By their way into heaven. The devil brought his way out of heaven. Come on, somebody. And there's a big crowd following him. Whatever he saw, that's what he read. He broke bad with God, he got kicked out. You play bad with God, you be so it, you get kicked out. I didn't write it, I'm just telling you what the word say. I'm breaking it down in everyday terms so you can get a, a grasp to the whole of this thought. My, my, my. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. I ain't got much time, so I'm going to have to do a part two or something. You know, I know y'all want to watch the football game, the Red Sox lost, people upset. They didn't lost their money. They didn't sold money to win, and they didn't lost their money. Y'all don't have no, I ain't no amen. I heard a whole lot of mm -hmm. Look at somebody and say, can I borrow a couple of your amen? Because I didn't use all mine up. Whatever you sow, that's what you reap. If you don't sow no amens, you don't get no amens. If you don't sow no praises, you don't get no blessing. If you don't give God the glory, any reason you're looking for that. Whatever man sow, that's shall he reap. You got to sow something if you want to reap something. You want to sow from God, learn to sow praises to God. Learn to, you want to hear it, learn to sow worship to God. you think for one minute, God see your tears, but he wants some of them tears to start turning into praises. Lord, I thank you. Come on, I thank you. My hair is turning gray, but I thank you. Come on, somebody. I can't get around as fast. But Lord, I thank you. I ain't got much to eat, but Lord, I thank you for the bread you put on my table. I might not have this and I might not have that, but I thank you for love. I thank you for a mouth. I thank you for my health. When you look through the scriptures, all kind of people got in trouble by what they sold. 
Look at somebody and say, I hope you're sowing into the kingdom. Look at somebody else and say, I hope you're sowing into the kingdom. Somebody. Amen, amen. A real Christian, a believer in Christ, is not one when somebody else is watching him. A real believer is when nobody else is watching you and living the life. Are y'all with me on this? Oh my God. Look at somebody said, This is your season to get blessed. If you don't claim it, Come on, if you don't speak it into the atmosphere, if you don't say it out loud, come on, somebody. You got to be able to speak things out and open, and God ain't hard to hear. He already knows what's in your heart. He already know what you need before you ask him. He just like for you to ask him. And I tell you, I don't have no problem about getting under the shower blessings of God. Because I know if I shout where praise is up, I expect praises and blessings to come down on me. If you don't believe me, ask, ask Ruth. Her and Naomi play boys like a fit fiddle. Come on, somebody. Y'all brothers, if you don't know it, you can be played. Amen. Oh, y'all don't want to say amen. Well, men were learning about snips and snails and puppy dog tails. <laughs> Women were learning about sugar and spice <laughs> and everything nice. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me on this? And, and, and you need to understand that, that when, when Boaz caught Ruth, he wanted to know who was this woman in his field? And she was out there gathering the wheat. Are y'all with me on this? And the men in the city said, oh, that's, uh, that, that, that's Ruth. That's Naomi's daughter-in-law. And by that time, my boy has checked his watch. I, I'm talking about literally now. Check it out. Uh, ain't ain't uh, Ruth, didn't Ruth, uh, uh, Naomi's husband uh, got killed with her two sons? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm single. I, I can. She's available, and I'm. I can get. I can come on, somebody. If y'all get with me, I can be out of y'all way. But y'all, y'all listen. Y'all ain't paying no attention to me right now. You trying to figure out where I'm going with this? Boaz had his eye on Ruth. Come on, somebody. And Ruth was available. Some people are sowing when they ain't got no business reaping. Sowing where they ain't trying to reap where they ain't got no business sowing. Come on. And some are reaping where they ain't got no business. Yeah, y'all getting with me. But the time is almost gone now. Take y'all a long time to get up with me. Come on, somebody. This man says, I tell you what, tomorrow. Come on. Tomorrow, while, while she's over at Boaz, said, while she's over in my field, uh-huh. put some extra stuff down. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all ain't with me right now. Uh, he, he said, you know, Ruth was a good looking woman. Uh-huh. Come on, somebody. Uh, Naomi tried to get rid of uh, her other wife, Oprah, I mean, other daughter in law, Oprah, and she went on back to the overnights. But Ruth said, no, no, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. She wasn't looking at the outward appearance. She was looking at the spiritual appearance. She saw the wheat in the field. I'm talking about literally going out and working in Boaz's field. And as she was weeping all this stuff, she was coming home because in those days, the poor did what they call gleaning the field. And when she gleaned the field, all this stuff was set up for her, and she just scooped it right up and set her working all day in the hot sun. Honey, put your feet up. Let me rub your feet with some olive oil. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's, another, that's a whole nother level there. 
and she, she, she went on home to her mother-in-law. And then as she was sitting there, uh, uh, Naomi said, where you get all this stuff from? Y'all with me on that? Where you get all this, this weed and all this, this stuff from? And she said, I was over in a man's uh, uh, vineyard by the name of Boaz. You can see oh you can see oh oh Naomi said, oh yeah, that's my cousin. <laughs> Girl, you better go. Are y'all with me on there? You better get on back over there and get in this field. That man got buku of money. He got property, land. Look at us. We need in the field. You better get with it. That's in everyday language. You know what I'm trying to say. And finally, she went back, and he got to introduce himself. But you see, the smart thing is that he couldn't marry because there was a cousin in front of her who was eligible to marry her. And what old Naomi, come on, she was old school. Naomi was old school, said, listen, we got to be able to get past my first cousin because he ain't no good. And you need to get to Boaz. So what you do while they're down on the threshing floor with the wheat, Come on, somebody. All you got to do is pull your shoes off and go down there and lay at his feet. Stay down there all night. Don't do nothing. Just stay there. And in the morning when the men wake up, they're going to say, who is this woman at Boaz's feet? And somebody going to say, that's our Ruth, Naomi's daughter-in-law. Now, they already jumped to conclusion. Come on, somebody. Many times you'll sow ideas and thoughts, and if you're not careful to line them up with God's word, you'll jump to conclusion. Amen. Look at somebody that says, Stop jumping to conclusion. Hi, this is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.